everybody. How you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Today I'm on day 15 of my quarantine. Same status as before. The entire family has zero symptoms of coronavirus. So I guess I feel a little bit more confident that we don't have it. Uh, or maybe we have antibodies and we're just immune to it, asymptomatic. Yet we can probably give it to somebody else if we did have it, but we wouldn't know, right? Anyway, uh, so my wife went out today to Trader Joe's and Costco. She uh, is wearing gloves and masks, and she says that it's very controlled at Trader Joe's and Costco. At Trader Joe's, they're only allowing two people in at a time, right? And they're making sure that it doesn't bundle up, so there's people waiting outside. I think she waited 40 minutes to get in. After she was done there, um, she went to Costco, and she says Costco is very organized. They only have two lines for checkout. Everybody is spread 10 feet apart. They have monitors that are in, that have a mask and gloves on, and they're just standing there away from everybody, telling people, you stand here, you stand here, you stand here, you know? So, it seems pretty controlled. I think they, they got a handle on it. Um, I don't think they're allowing unlimited amount of people in, like there's a line outside, and they're letting people in slowly one at a time. Somebody finishes, they come out, they let another one in, you know, so I think they're only allowing at the most maybe a hundred people in the whole store at a time, you know, so that there's spacing around it. <laughs> what in the world has this world come to, you know what I mean? Has anybody ever seen anything like this before? Never. And uh, I hope I never see it again, you know, but honestly, to be honest with you, I thought this country was prepared for anything. How can the richest country in the world not have enough ventilators or masks? I mean, seriously, you know, the amount of construction we do, the masks, our medical health care system, it's just insane, right? Anyway, I guess you guys are wondering why the yellow MTD Cub Cadet is sitting outside here uh, in back of me. Well, some guy uh, texted me on let go and said that he would like to uh, take a look at it and so of course I explained to him as I explained to everybody that wants to buy something from me right is that uh, honestly I don't really care whether or not I sell it or not you know what I'm saying it's not like I'm poor or anything like that and I don't necessarily need the money but I would like to get rid of them you know but I want to do it in the way where it's um, safest for everybody you know if I had it I don't want to give it to somebody if they have it I don't want them to give it to me you know so um, I told him this do you understand about lawn tractors? Have you ever ridden one before, know how to start it up and all? And if they say yes, then I'll say, okay, just want to let you know that there, is no, um, there are no safety switches on there and uh, you can get off the tractor while it's running with the blades turning. He's like, that's the way I like it, baby. <laughs> anyway, I see something interesting coming up. Hold on. <laughs> live while I'm filming the neighbor from across the street. That's the guy that I fixed his uh, snowblower uh, about a year or so ago. Um, remember, he just dropped it off and he says, hey, listen, can you help me start this up, you know? And I told him, remember, uh, I didn't really know the guy. He was a new neighbor. I said, uh, I don't really work on other people's stuff, but because he's a neighbor, I'll do him a favor, you know? Um, so he's been really good to me uh, since then. He, uh, every time he throws shit out, you know, like uh, he had a power washer and some other shit that he didn't want, uh, he came over and says, hey, I'm putting this out on the curb if you don't want it. I says, no, oh, I want it. So uh, today, it's a nice day. You saw, he was, while I'm filming, he walks over with this thing uh, with his daughter. And um, his wife's a cop too. We have a lot of cops that live around here. So we don't really worry about crime in this area, you know. Ex-cop, if you guys didn't know, I used to be NYPD for eight and a half years back in the 90s. And uh, I actually worked 9-11, the pile, everything. Um, I had a full aspirator on, so I have no ill effects of it. I bought it myself, like $300 at the time, whatever. Hey, better safe than sorry, right? Um, he's a Suffolk County cop. I think his wife has coronavirus, I think, I'm not sure. I saw them all wearing masks uh, yesterday, indoors. Anyway, he just, uh, he says that he bought a new lawnmower. He knows that I could use it for parts or whatever, you know. So this is a uh, Honda Quattro Cut. This is, this was very expensive at one time. I mean, this is the Harmony 2, HRT 218. 
sorry, 216, the quadra cut system, which is the four blades, right? It's not four blades, but it's two blades, but you know what I mean, one, two, three, four. And um, <laughs> I had a bunch of these. These are like impossible to work on. They're so over-engineered. There's actually a timing belt inside. Um, I mean, it's good more when it works, but if you have to fix this thing, holy shit, what a nightmare. Um, you ready for this? I think he said there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Let's see. Remind me to wash my hands when I uh, touch my face. Ah, the throttle needs to be on. Well, it does start up and it does run great. And as you saw, came right off, right in front of you. That's okay, I have another recoil starter. Three bolts, put it back on, it's good to go. I love stuff like that. That's great. Thank you, neighbor. Anyway, getting back, getting back to what I was saying, right? Um, guy's gonna come. He, uh, this is exactly what he wants, you know what I mean? Watch. Hydrostatic. Low idle. This is a 13 horsepower flathead. They're noisy, but they always run well and they hardly ever go bad. Uh, so now uh, I'm gonna go get started on what I have in the garage. This is, I guess, episode four of this thing, you know what I mean? And. Uh, I'm not even close to it running and working and all that. Um, as you saw from yesterday, for some reason, the, uh, the thing's not getting any fuel. Um, while if you spray it and stuff, it'll start just fine. But battery's dunsky. The battery's completely terrible, you know. But um, it won't start unless it's on choke. It's got gas. So I have a feeling the carburetor's dirty. I don't, I don't, I think I, that was one of the carburetors I just grabbed out of the bin. Let's try starting it just for the hell of it, just to see. Yeah, it's not gonna start. I can just tell, but you can only do a few cranks before the battery dies, you know what I mean? So look, I'm gonna spray something in it real quick. Just to show you guys that it will start just not without a spray. It's a beautiful day today. It's about, uh, feels like 60, maybe 65 at the end. So there you go. It does start. It's not getting any fuel. So we're gonna try to figure that out. Unfortunately with this, you're gonna have to take this left side panel off completely so you have access to the carburetor. Um, I think the carburetor might need cleaning because after a while of the new fuel soaking on the bowl, I knew the bowl was kind of dirty, but nothing was going to be released to come out, you know what I'm saying? But um, because it was soaking with fuel, maybe something let go and it stuck into the hole and it's not, fuel is not getting into the throat of the carburetor. So I'm going to take that off. Of course, I have to try ATF in here. And um, I might have to take the uh, mower deck off because... While it, the two blades do spin, they don't spin easily. And they, it, I feel like they get hung up when, the bat, when this low, bad battery is trying to start this engine. It, it 
holds onto the belt and it prevents the engine from starting even more. So it is pretty easy to remove it though. It is just um, three three eighths bolts, except for this one over here, which is kind of jigged by the last guy, but it works. It's a threaded bolt that fits exactly, you know. One here. Henry, that's not very hard. Well, I mean, it's hard compared to like a craftsman hood where you just lift it up with your hands and you're done. Oh, there is another one under here. Oh, crap. Of course it's that. It's a 7 16 There we go. It's easy. So, uh... Let's remove this um, hose clamp. I'm going to pull the fuel line out. See if fuel pours out. And it does, see? Henry, the rod's going to smell like old gas. You, Mommy doesn't like that. Yes, she doesn't like anything. Man, I gotta take this whole thing off just to get this off. I could do the intake manifold, but it's kind of risky, you know. If you keep on taking bolts off of the intake manifold because the bolts go right into the engine block, you could strip it, whatever, and then you're screwed, you know. So I'm just gonna take this off so I can take this off so I can take that off. So here we go. I've just uh, loosened the top cover four bolts, right? Take them out. Now I have access to the carburetor. I had a subscriber, at least I think he's a subscriber. His name is Jake, I think. Jake from State Farm. Anyway, uh, he wanted to know if I could do a quick video on how the throttle plate and the linkages work on this carburetor. So right now it's at choke, see? Choke plate is closed. This thing right here is what pushes it. So now it's off choke, it's at full throttle, okay? So, you know, you're gonna feel the notch over here on this handle, right? If you pull it and you can see the flap is open, see, it's now open. Full air is going in now, okay? So you want to choke. This is low throttle. See, it goes all the way down. See the wire? This is the most it'll go. This is the lowest throttle. Now I'm increasing the throttle, right? As you're increasing the throttle, this thing goes up, pushes the choke linkage. That pushes this closed. That's your choke. Release choke choke, off choke, choke, off choke, right? In turn, when you do uh, lowest idle, right, the governor is moved too, to back off the tension. This is the throttle right here. This is idle, this is full open, idle, full open. And then once again, choke. To remove this carburetor, it's very easy. 5 16 off these studs. There were 7 16 nuts that hold the cover uh, air box to, to it. That's really not very important, but the seal between the carburetor and the intake manifold is very important. You cannot have any air leaks at all. But honestly, this will run without the air box at all, but you'll just contaminate it with dirt and dust. So two studs come right off. Gasket in between. Disconnect the fuel solenoid, which I hate. This is just the power to it, right? So here, here's the choke linkage. You pull it out like this, right? comes off like this. Remember to put it back on. It's the last hole over here. And you hook it up like that. Put it through this little canal here. See? It just rests right there. I know it looks a little uh, crazy, but once you get to do it a lot, you'll see it. You'll feel very comfortable. Over here, the uh, throttle linkage connected to the big hole over here. There's a super small hole that holds the super tiny wire. You pull the super tiny wire out. Careful not to bend it too much. 
Come on, man. And then you just twist it so it comes out like that. See? And there's your carburetor. I'm going to take this bowl off and see why uh, it doesn't seem to be getting any fuel. So look, I'm blowing. I can blow. Don't know why it wasn't getting any fuel. Unless the jet is probably blocked or something. I'm not sure. Loosen the bolt here. I mean the screw. And here we go. Fuel's clean. Fuel solenoid is up. Fuel solenoid being up is not going to allow it to get any fuel. I think I have to take the fuel solenoid off and um, test it, see if it works. Another thing I want to show you guys is this. Um, so look, you know that when you usually depress the brake all the way, right? And then you, uh, and you pull the uh, parking brake, right? It should stay in place, right? This one actually moves back an inch before it does stay in place. It has an extra strong spring that somebody put in here so that this is very difficult to push down, okay? And because it's pulling it back again, I don't think it's engaging the brake safety switch. Therefore, even though it's depressed and locked on the parking brake, it still won't engage the starter because the switch is back one inch. You have to actually use your feet and push it forward for it to work. As you can see, power, it, it kind of sticks, see? Open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, closed. I want to say that that might have been a problem because it kind of sticks. This will prevent fuel from going into your uh, the jet, see, if it's stuck there. But it seems to be okay. It seems to be okay now, but you just never know. That's why I hate them. So I'm thinking. You know what I'm thinking. Anyway, I think I want to remove the safety switch for this because it won't start unless you put like a lot of force onto that pedal. I wanted to show exactly which uh, jet is the one that I drilled out. It's this little one right in there. I just took the uh, biggest, uh, the smallest um, drill bit that I had and I just made this hole a little bit bigger for it to run right. But apparently it doesn't really run right because it doesn't really run, you know? I'm going to look through this a little bit more, but I'm going to try to find a way to get rid of that fuel solenoid. I have another fuel solenoid uh, from my bo box of parts, right? And uh, while the valve has been cut, a little bit still sticks out. So I just want to get rid of that little bit that sticks out. Because why? Because it drives me crazy, that's why. <laughs> See, I have a vice, sort of. Clean. I put the fuel, uh, the one, the fuel solenoid, the one that I just zipped off, right? So now it's just acting as a, uh, a nut that seals that hole off. As you can see, the inside here has a little bit of corrosion, but it doesn't come off, you know, easily. But I figured if you had fuel sitting in there for a while it might slowly you know take the bits and pieces off you know what i mean anyway the guy that uh, wants to see that tractor's here this got to be interesting so the guy didn't want it easy come easy go you know what i'm saying i guess he pictured it to be a little bit more newer than it was anyway so look
much nicer. I think I'm going to put this carburetor back on and see if it starts. But since I have it out, might as well blow out the holes too. So here's the jet that I uh, drilled out. Clearly goes through. I'm using contact cleaner from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. It doesn't blow up the gaskets here like uh, regular carb spray would. Try it. You'll like it. I like to do the joints to make sure the flap opens and closes easily. Other than that, it seems like it's okay. I have seen some of these Nikki carbs that have a spring that's here. I'm not sure what that was for. Some have it, some don't. Seems to work good. So I'm just going to put this together. I'll save you guys from the agony. going to put it on and I'll uh, keep it rolling because I know some of some of the subscribers would like to know how to put it on small little wire through the small little hole big throttle through this hole yeah sometimes you have to pivot it like this to get the right angle to get it through the hole it's uh, easier when I'm not on camera <laughs> So there you go. This throttle right here goes into that hole. Little wire goes into the hole right next to it. You can tell this is the throttle because this is the a part that has a little screw here so that you can adjust the idle, the slow speed idle, right? Low speed idle. Over here is your choke. It's spring loaded. See? This one isn't spring loaded. This one's spring loaded, right? While it's open, a hole right over here. You'll take your choke lever here, right? You want to make sure it's bent like this, not like this, because you'll see that if it's like this, it won't even fit, because this one will be out here. You know what I mean? So you have to make sure it's like this, so that it lines up with this canal. Oh boy, oh boy. And you just slide it in through like this. My wife is back from Costco. Let me put my mask on and help her unload. <laughs> so I'm back. She said it was very controlled and uh, they were directing people to be out of the way and give, keeping their distance, which is good. And uh, she bought like $700 worth of supplies. That'll keep us uh, eating for a while. So we just unloaded, the whole family just unloaded all the stuff and I guess we're good for a while. Hope you guys are all uh, stocking up on stuff. Um, at least, you know, food is what I mean. The toilet paper stuff is kind of ridiculous, seriously. Uh, we bought a lot when we could, you know, but we haven't used up any more toilet paper than anybody else has, you know? I mean, we're gonna have enough toilet paper for like a year, you know what I'm saying? So it's silly, you know? It's silly what they're doing with the toilet paper. It makes no sense at all. Are you gonna, are you gonna shit more now with the virus than before? It doesn't make any sense. If you go to the stores now, you'll see there's plenty of toilet paper. So anyway, that's how you put it right back again. I'm not going to connect this because, remember, I cut it out. So now I'm going to reattach the fuel. Hope the fuel goes in. The fuel shut off, off. So it should be flowing with fuel now. And uh, technically it should start, right? Okay, I'm going to give it a try now. Like I said, you have to push this. Even though it's on, the brake is, the parking brake is on, right? It still won't start, see? You have to push it down one more inch. 
choke. See what I did? I just took this, I didn't even shut the key off. I just pulled this back, the safety switch, the, the brake, right? And it stalled. So there's something wrong with the, the brake safety switch. You're not gonna be able to run this thing if it, every time you let go of it, it's gonna stall. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna have to do a bypass, man. I can see the wiring harness right there to the ignition switch. I stuck my head down there and I could see that the orange wire is the solenoid wire. I'm going to take that orange solenoid wire and connect the live, connect the straight wire straight from that solenoid, orange wire, directly to the trigger on the solenoid. It's very difficult to find the solenoid on the uh, MTDs because they hide it in the back where the battery tray is. The access is very difficult. But I'm going to take that panel off and see if I can locate a harness that I could tap into straight to the solenoid. Maybe I could find the solenoid right there. It appears to be just two five sixteenths, which it's not. Very unusual for it to be three eighths on just a panel. I have to take this knob off. panel should come off. It does. Ooh, something's hooked onto it. Aha! Uh -huh. Safety switch for it to be um, in neutral. See, once you have it on neutral, it touches, see, and stops the engine. Hmm, that's interesting. I bet you this is probably the issue. I wonder what happens if I disconnect it. If I disconnect that, Will the engine start? Let's see. Nope, it won't. What if I put it down? Parking brake, it is on. That doesn't matter, this doesn't do anything. Ah, solenoid. <clears throat> Look at that. Orange wires right here and it's connected all throughout the safety switches. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut the orange wire right there. I'm in the engine compartment now, and I have traced that orange wire right here. This is the orange wire that if you pull it, It leads right to 
the solenoid of that. So here's the orange wire, and it goes where? It goes directly to the brake safety switch, see? So that goes through a whole bunch of different circuits, right? And prevents your engine to start unless you have this thing all the way down. The minute that you pull it back up again, it stops. So the guy had, the guy before me was in here, and he wired all kinds of crazy crap, you know? So I'm just going to cut this orange wire right here. <laughs> I hope that's the one. And I'm going to lead it back down under here. I'm going to lead it back down here to the middle. I know the right wire was cut because when I pulled it out from the ignition switch, it came out and this is the cut one. So I'm going to replace this one all underneath, right? Let's see if I can do it. Now again, I'm only doing this because it won't let me, it won't uh, let me run this thing without, um, once I release the brake, it'll shut off. So whoever did the safety switch thing did it wrong and uh, I have no idea what he did. So to ensure that we get an engine start, here it is right here. Here's the other wire that goes straight to the, this is a three post solenoid, so the, the other post is the ground, which is this green wire here. This is the only other tab that sticks out other than the two terminals, right? So this orange one is the trigger wire, right? So now I'm gonna take this trigger wire, I'm gonna cut it right from the harness. Can't see, Henry. There you go. So right here. This is the wire from the ignition switch of the S solenoid or starter tab off the ignition switch. This is the orange matching wire that is off the trigger wire, off the tab, off the three post solenoid, right? And this is a direct connection to it. So you're going to start the engine no matter what with this, okay? It doesn't go through that whole spaghetti full of wiring harnesses that go through the seat safety switch, the PTO, neutral lever, and the brake. So we're bypassing all that stuff. When you turn the key now, engine will turn. So I'm just gonna splice this wire here, like that. I got this a long time ago. It's really helped me out over the years. Makes uh, splitting wires very easily, see? Sometimes it works. Most of the time it works. Of course, when I'm doing, when I'm telling you about it, it doesn't work. There's a lot of oil on here, so if there's, if it's an oily wire, it won't work. There we go. So look, my friend Samuel Sandoval bought me that kit. I'm gonna try it on this. And you know what? I'll be able to use my um. Heat gun with this too. So two Samuel Sandoval items being used in one procedure. Awesome. So here's the kit that my friend Samuel Sandoval bought me. He saw that I was always doing this stuff and I was doing it the way that you're not supposed to do it. I mean, you can do it, but this is better. So it says here, I actually read the instructions, believe it or not. <laughs> Slip it through one of them. You have to make sure that this is turned so the little strands don't get caught while you're trying to, while you're trying to stick it through the hole. <laughs> so I got it through there. I guess you go by the thickness of um, the gauge wire, you know? So, uh, I don't know, it says to do this, but I have a feeling this might be too thin, you know? Because if I if I if I twist this right, there's no way. I mean, this this fits exactly. You know what I mean? So maybe I might have to use the next one up. Next one up is blue. Blue seems really thick, you know. But it doesn't look like the red one will accommodate for sure. Because if I twist these two together, it'll be double that width, you know. You know, like, like so. See how thick that is now? It's a big blob. 
So I'm going to pull this through to the middle where the solder is. Right there, it's in the middle. That big blob of uh, wire I had there is right there in the middle where the metal part is, see? So I've got this uh, heat gun also sent to me by Samuel Sandoval. And it says that you use the heat gun. Oh, that's pretty hot already. I have this attachment on here. As you can see, it's melting. It's melting. But will it melt it enough? See, will it melt it enough to melt the metal part? No way. If you keep this on here, right, there's no way this metal thing is going to melt. And if you keep it on here to try to get it to melt, right, this plastic will burn right off. So I don't think I'm going to do that because uh, this is it, you know. Trust me, this is way better than I'd had before, but I honestly don't think um, you're going to be able to melt the middle part with this heat gun, right? Because solder needs to be really hot, you know? If you have the heat gun that hot to melt the solder, this plastic sheathing here is it's going to burn and just drip off, I'm not even going to coat it. But, I mean, I'm pretty satisfied with that connection. That connection is like 100 times than what I used to do, you know? So thanks, Sam. That was really cool. Now that we have the solenoid wire connected directly to the ignition switch with no safety switches in between, it ought to start up without me doing anything. It should just, the key should turn and it should start. That's what it should do. There you go. See, cranks. Choke a little. As you can see, engine runs fine without, with the, um, after I took the fuel solenoid out. Fuel solenoid delete. Crap. You know what I mean? I guess it was the fuel solenoid problem. And uh, we fixed that problem now. It'll always start now regardless of this, that, and the other thing. So I'm going to put this panel back on. And uh, we're going we're gonna to take the deck off because I just want to make sure everything's freely in use from the deck. situation with this was that this mower deck is designed that the height adjuster right is the PTO also you take it off the first notch on the height adjuster one notch down and it has a mechanism where it pulls the it pulls the mower deck back one inch that pulling it back one inch tightens the belt to the bottom double stack crankshaft pulley that engages the blades. So as you saw before, uh, when you turn on the engine, the blades want to move, right? 
So even though it was all the way to the highest level, it wasn't, a, it wasn't pulling back. I'm sorry, it wasn't pushing forward to ease the slack on the belt. So I jacked it up, took that panel back off because you have good access to it there, right? And I noticed that it was missing the spring. It was missing a return spring for the thing to go backwards, see? It's uh, complicated. But as you saw, I uh, put the carburetor back on, I put the uh, top engine shroud back on, I put the side back on, right? Um, and so I took the mower deck off too. Check out the mower deck. So well, I initially thought that the mower deck was kind of bad because it was getting hung up. Well, that's the reason why it was being hung up because it was missing the return spring to pull the mower deck back. If you look, smooth. Same goes with that one too. You guys see that? So, um, it's actually, the blades are pretty sharp. As you can see, somebody Somebody sharpened them. They're pretty sharp. It's going in the right direction too, counterclockwise. So I'm going to uh, put it back and see if it will. really not sure why it didn't start in the first place you know today took the carburetor apart grinded down that fuel solenoid right 
as you can hear, it backfires, you know, uh, when I start it again. Um, it won't start if the mower deck belt is attached to the pulley. Um, so the mower deck, while it spins freely and everything, the mechanism where, you know, you put it forward, right, or put, put the mower deck down, um, it's not giving it enough slack on the belt for it to not grip onto it when you're trying to start it. So every time you start it, I got to take the belt off, which is ridiculous, you know. So I got to kind of figure that out. Um, with these MTDs, it's like this with my yellow MTD Cub Cadet and also for my Rodimus Prime. Those are, it's all the same mechanism, the, the mower deck belt, you know. You one notch down and the mower deck moves back one inch to tighten the belt to power the blades. But uh, even though I've got that spring on there and you can't push it anywhere forward, it seems like the belt is too short or something, you know, or it just grips so well onto the uh, double stack pulley that it engages the, the blades for the engine to start. With this lousy battery, you know what I'm saying, you need a, as much power to the engine at, uh, as possible to get it to start. So for it to start, I can't have the uh, mower deck belts attached to the double stack pulley. We bypassed the magneto because before it wouldn't start again, you know, and I could not figure out why, because it's because I bypassed the solenoid into that wiring harness that it feels like something is missing from that circuit. So I also bypassed the uh, magneto by simply taking the black wire from the magneto that leads down, right, and it goes into the wiring harness, right? It goes into a bunch of other wiring harnesses that sh are shared with all the safety switches, right? And I took a straight wire right from the M tab on the ignition switch and connected them to, and so now it'll always start and it'll always shut off, see? So uh, that's that. Uh, what else did we do today? Uh, I really don't feel like we did much, you know what I'm saying? Except to bypass the ignition switch. Yeah, bypass the uh, magneto and all that. So I don't know where, whether, oh, well, removing the deck and all that stuff, but we still don't have it corrected, you know? I mean, I guess we cleared up the carburetor issue, you know what I'm saying? Cleared up the carburetor, bypassed the magneto, bypassed the uh, ignition switch to the solenoid. So it'll always start regardless of the, you having the pedal down or whatever, all of the safety switches. Remove the uh, mower deck. I still got to figure it out. You know, I still didn't do this damn tire either, but I've had enough. I've been out here all day and I feel like I haven't really accomplished much, you know. Um, mailbag. I was uh, on Instagram last night. And I saw this ad, you know, you have Instagram ads, right? And it was a energy drink called Life Aid, okay? Life Aid energy drink. I've seen, I've seen the logo around, I've seen it, you know, and uh, they're doing a special. Two cans for 99 cents. I'm like, free shipping? Free shipping, free shipping. Two cans of energy drink for 99 cents. So all I'm paying is 99 cents and somebody will send me two cans of energy drink for free? How do you say no? So I, and they take PayPal, 99 cents. So what are you guys who donated a dollar? You're buying me these two drinks. All right, think about this for a second. This is a flat rate envelope from the United States Postal Service. You know what that costs? Minimum, 715. So they spent 715, right? to send me two energy drinks. <laughs> Do not invest in stock in this company because how are you making money? You, you can't be making any money, you're losing money. A nice little box here. Serve ice cold, enjoy. Vitamins, you'll enjoy drinking. Only the good stuff, every can. So I spent 50 cents per can on this. I got the, uh, they, they let you choose like five or eight flavors. Immunity aid. In today's day of pandemics, you want immunity. So I got, I chose the immunity aid. And I think this is their main drink called Life Aid. So I wanted to try their main drink. It has turmeric in it. I mean, seriously, you know, I mean, 99 cents is all I paid, fellas. 
They paid $7.15 plus the cost of the handling, the cost of paying somebody to pack this thing, to put it in an envelope, and to ship it, right? Also, there's the cost of the drink itself, the bottling of it, the can, the resources. So obviously it's a promotion. They just want everybody to know about it, right? But they're losing a ton of money shipping it to me for free. Let's try. I know it says drink it cold, but I just want to try. It's very medicine-y. I could taste the vitamins, right? But it's, it tastes and smells very medicine-y. I guess if it was cold, I guess I would enjoy it. I mean, if, you know. It's not a pleasant tasting drink, okay? It's not something you say, oh, I wish I had a Life Aid. You know, that would really quench my thirst. So it's got turmeric in it, full B complex, ginger, boitin, magnesium, rosemary, vitamin C, oregano, and cayenne. I don't think I would ever buy it again. I've just given you first, uh, first hand experience of what I'm experiencing right now, but. You know, I'm, I'm not kidding with you fellas. I mean, seriously. You'll see it, it's 99 cents. It doesn't say here, it just says free, whatever. But anyway, uh, that's it for today. I, I feel like I've been out here for hours, you know, and I don't really feel like I accomplished anything, you know. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel by a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on the next part. Have a great day. See you guys next time on the Mowers and Blowers. See you next time on Mowers and Blowers.